I've spent some time AFKing at the farms in the industrial district and it's time to see where we're at in terms of resources. It's so convenient to be able to AFK at the creeper farm and have all the other farms running at the same time. It just works so well and having this central storage system where everything collects and you haven't got to worry about sorting anything out just saves so much time and it's so enjoyable just to watch it all collect in there. Now I've only been AFK for a couple of hours, it's quite interesting just to look through, that's not bad, just to look through and see what we've got in terms of resources. The one I'm most interested in however is gunpowder and that's not terrible I would say, I mean I've seen worse, I've seen better, these are just the four miscellaneous chests for anything else that isn't, oh, I've set myself on fire. And then I thought somebody was barbecuing, I said oh Lord Jesus it's a fire. As I was saying, those last four chests, they're just for miscellaneous things, maybe bones or uh, rotten flesh or whatever might come out of the mob farm or whatever. Now I have plans for this episode, there are two things that I want to do. The first is to make some progress on the slime farm because at the moment there's only one spawning layer and I need to clear out two of the sides to, uh, to allow for more spawning layers to be put in. The second thing that I'd like to do is to make a start on the guardian farm, but for that we're going to need Graveyard Rose's help, so I might have to wait for him to come online. So for now, I'll just make a start on the slime farm and see how we get on from there. So here we are over at the slime farm. I just dispatched with this skelly. And that bit that he's standing on there, the three block wide part, that's the part that I need to take down all the way to the bottom and then do the same on the other side so that basically everything above the magma cubes is exposed. And after that, I'll put some more layers in the middle for the slimes to spawn on. Um, and then, yeah, they should be attracted to the iron golems that I'll put around the outside and fall and take some damage and then take the rest of the damage off of the magma cubes where they will be killed and have their drops picked up by the mine carts with hoppers. Get the digging out done today. I'm not sure we'll get the actual platforms, the spawning platforms put in place today because I do want to make a start on the ocean monument and get that up and running to a certain extent, at least get the foundation in place. So yeah, let me do this maybe in the form of a montage and see how that works out. So that's one side complete and we now have a level, well a level wall all the way up there. I'm just going to go up the top and just make sure that I've got all of the blocks, I'm pretty sure that I have. And then I'll make a start on this, on this other side I think, yeah that looks pretty good. So if I just chip my way over to this other wall I need to do exactly the same thing, make it three blocks deep 
and then we can start to uh, start to put our iron golems in. But I really think that um, we're only going to get as far as clearing this out. I'll have to do the rest of it in another episode. As I say, that guardian farm is definitely one that I want to work on. Now I don't know yet how well that montage works out, but let me know down in the comments what you thought, if that was a good way to, uh, to show progress or if you prefer the jump cuts or time lapses or whatever the case may be. But for now I'm just going to keep hacking away at this, probably off camera, and see how far I can get and how quickly I can, can clear this area out. Progress update, I'm about halfway done on this side, which means three quarters done overall. The Minecraft gods have just told me that I have a visitor. And any second now... So for now I'm just going to carry on digging, I'm sure Graveyard Rose will come to me when he's ready and then we'll uh, get the stuff together to get to work on the Guardian farm. One Discord conversation later. We've decided that two pickaxes are better than one so he's going to help me clear off the last of this little segment and then we'll, uh, we'll get going. So we have a list of materials that we're going to need in order to build the Guardian Farm and I'm just collecting the last of this glass here to add to that. Um, we've got the concrete powder collected that we're going to need because so we're going to go for a mix of cyan concrete and the bricks that you get made out of prismarine. And I think that once we've got the base in place, the rest of it should make sense. It's only a case of building individual cells. This is a Silent Whisperer design by the way, so I'll try and leave a comment, uh, not a comment, a link to his video his tutorial for this down in the description let me know if you build this yourself i think it's going to be a quite a good farm certainly it looks to yield a lot of drops which is exactly what we're looking for we're building this i think for me we're just building this for the sake of getting uh, an unlimited supply of sea lanterns so yeah here we have the shulker boxes filling them all up with all of the items that we need and once we've got everything we'll head over there and begin the build Here's another thing that we can tick off the list, the cyan concrete powder. We've decided we're just going to place the concrete powder directly into the water. There's no point using the concrete maker to make it in the first place. It will just take too much time. It will go hard in the water and that's exactly what we're looking for. Now, I haven't got the redstone bits together but this should be enough just to get that bottom layer started and make it look quite nice hopefully. I don't want this just to be a stone brick build so just have a quick check. That yes, four stack, 45 stacks, yes, 17 stacks of glass, yes. I've got the redstone torches, I haven't got the repeaters or the pistons yet, but I can make that easily enough not to worry. I've got the redstone dust, so that's fine. So yeah, I think um, I think we're headed, ready to head over there. I have a tendency to be underprepared for this sort of thing, so I'm just going to grab this redstone dust now while I think of it, and I, I think I'll do that in the form of a very, very short time lapse. I told you that would be a short time lapse. So Graveyard Rose has already marked out the borders around the outside. All we've got to do is put in the main floor. And I think we'd be able to say that's a good bit of progress that we've made today. Let's do another one of those montages.
So I just made some repeaters because we're going to need them a little bit further down the line for the actual cells that the guardians will be in for the uh, for the killing chambers. Graveyard rows are just marking out all of the spawning points for the guardians so that we know where to build the cells. And then, yeah, we should be good to go in terms of building them and getting this farm up and running. But I think that's going to be, well, that's definitely going to be a task for another episode because this one's running over. But we might just have enough time to gather ourselves some more tridents. So I've already taken the liberty of going into the gold farm with the tridents that we've got and just enchanting some of these. And I think the enchantments aren't too bad. It's impaling on most of them. I think one's got impaling two. Most of them are four and five. So that should certainly serve the purpose. If we just have a quick look in here, we've got impaling three, impaling two, four, four, four. Yeah, it's not too bad. I think we could do better. But at the end of the day, the impaling isn't going to make that much of a difference, I don't thing so we'll see what happens. The trident hunting did not go well. That's all we've got time for for this episode but there is a little something that I'd like to talk to you about IRL. And that is video editing. Now, I've had a filming channel for a while. I've done a couple of different projects where I've gone out and shot some footage and used video editing software to put it together. And I've been using Filmora X, which I found to be a really, honestly, it's a fantastic bit of kit. It does everything that you want it to do. It's like Premiere Pro, but without the, the, the price tag. I'm sure there are some features in Premiere Pro that are a little bit better. But in terms of what I've been doing, Filmora X certainly ticked the box. The problem that I have is that my PCs are not particularly powerful. I think one's got 4 gig of RAM, one's got 8 gig of RAM, and the accompanying graphics cards that go with them. Now, Graveyard Rose is an avid Mac user, and he has got a new one, and therefore has let me have this one for the time being, just to kind of see what it's like, um, see how I get on with a Mac, because I've never really used one before. But what I found when I switched over to the Mac was that my Filmora X account won't link to it. I've got two PCs that run Windows and both of those have Filmora X on it and when I want to use one I sign in and it signs me out of the other one and that's absolutely fine because I can just switch between the two of them. But when I put Filmora X on the Mac it wouldn't let me sign in. I need to buy the software again. So when I originally started making videos and video editing, I was comparing Filmora X and Premiere Pro and the only reason that I went with Filmora X was because I could buy it outright in one hit without having to pay for a subscription for a hobby that I didn't know if I was going to keep doing or not. Now since I started, I have really enjoyed video editing and now that I've got my hands on a Mac, I wonder if it's time to switch over to Premiere Pro. So I'm going to give it a go. The next video of this Minecraft Let's Play series that I've been working on it's going to be edited on a brand new operating system, Mac OS, on a brand new bit of kit, which is the iMac, and a brand new bit of video editing software, which is going to be Premiere Pro. So bear with me over the next couple of episodes while I figure out how to use it and how to do special effects and that sort of thing. I think it could be really cool. I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be a steep learning curve, but it's going to take some time to get right. So bear with me. Keep an eye out for the next episode. And if you have any tips on being a Mac user or Premiere Pro or just making videos in general, whether it's Minecraft or something else, drop a little comment down below for me. I'd love to hear your feedback. But for now, that's it. I'm out. See ya.